let's talk about flaxseed and breast cancer. I've been getting a lot of questions about the safety of it. And bottom line, if you want to stop watching after the next five seconds is bottom line, flaxseed is safe and may even have a protective effect. Now, I always recommend talking to your doctor about anything specific to your medical care. But why are some people being told that they can't have flaxseed if they've had a diagnosis of breast cancer? And this really boils down to the whole phytoestrogen conversation. Flaxseed is rich in fiber, omega-3 fatty acids, alpha-linolic acid, and lignans. And lignans are phytoestrogens, which are estrogen-like compounds derived from plants. Naturally, when people think phytoestrogen and breast cancer, they get nervous and they think, oh my gosh, this is going to increase breast cancer risk, but let me tell you why it doesn't. So the lignans that are found in flaxseed and other foods, but really in high concentration in flaxseed, they have both anti-estrogenic and pro-estrogenic properties. So when estrogen levels are high in the body, the lignans actually compete with our internal estrogens to bind to the estrogen receptor. And that actually results because they're competing for that binding that actually can result in an anti-estrogenic state. When estrogen levels are low, such as in menopause, there's less estrogen to compete with. So they actually can work as a little bit more of a weak pro-estrogen. But here's the kicker. There are two types of estrogen receptors, alpha and beta. Alpha is the one we measure in breast cancer when we say your estrogen receptor is 90% or 100% and that's what we target with medications. Flaxseed also binds to a greater concentration to estrogen receptor beta. And whereas estrogen receptor alpha can cause cancer cell proliferation and growth, estrogen receptor beta can actually act as a tumor suppressor and it can counteract the effects of the estrogen receptor alpha. For these reasons, and based on results from clinical trials, flaxseed does not increase breast cancer risk. And in some studies um, has been shown to potentially be protective against breast cancer, especially in postmenopausal women. It may enhance the effectiveness of tamoxifen, because remember the way tamoxifen works is it blocks estrogen from binding to the estrogen receptor. So together there may be some protective effect and that data is mostly in preclinical studies. There's not really any significant clinical trial data for patients who've already had breast cancer and what flaxseed does because that's a kind of really hard thing to measure and you'd have to follow people for a long time and there's just too many variables, but we extrapolate the data from um, what we know about breast cancer risk and what we also know about the data with tamoxifen. And so should you be taking flaxseed if you want to reduce your breast cancer risk or if you've had breast cancer? It's not something that we say everyone should take flaxseed. Um, I think it is really has so many nutrients um, and has a lot of benefits. And I would talk to your doctor about whether this is something that's right for you. We'll say that years ago, because of its kind of pro, a weekly pro-estrogenic state in uh, menopause, there was a lot of talk about whether it could be used to treat hot flashes. Um, and there were some weak studies in either direction, but um, it is not recommended routinely as a treatment for hot flashes because we don't have any robust data showing its benefit. Bottom line, there are no significant known safety concerns with flaxseed and breast cancer. In addition to altering estrogen metabolism, like we discussed, phytoestrogens have other benefits. They have antioxidant properties. They can help with cholesterol. They can help with blood sugar regulation and others. Um, if you are taking it, a recommended amount of flaxseed is about one to two tablespoons per day, um, but it may impact the absorption of certain medications that you're taking because of the fiber. And so I would recommend talking to your doctor about whether this is right for you, if this is something you should do, when to take it. Um, and remember, this is not medical advice. This is general information and use your medical team to guide you in what you should be doing. Let me know your questions below.